Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here from The Retro Future. Today we have a little collaboration with another YouTuber who goes by the name of Tube Restorations. He has a fantastic channel about vintage restorations. Definitely go check him out. Uh, he reached out to me on Instagram and said, I've got a couple Game Boys that I'm looking to restore and uh, I know that you make videos on Game Boys and there's a couple of things that I would like you to do uh, to these Game Boys and it would give us a reason to collab, which is always awesome. And uh, yeah, a few weeks later, here is the parcel. I'm very excited to open it up. Let's take a look. So funnily enough, this actually ended up not arriving at my house. Uh, this was sent to my PO box, uh, obviously, which is the retro future. And uh, the post office wrote retro furniture on there. And then it ended up at a company called Rito Finance. So it ended up just going in completely the wrong place. So I had to drive out and go and get it. Luckily for me, I live on a really small island and uh, Rito Finance kindly reached out to me and said, uh, We've got a package with your name on it. Do you want it? And I said, hell yeah. So here it is. This is the inside of the box. Now I know that I need to do a mod to a couple of Game Boys. So I think there's two in here. One, he wants a backlight and a bivert mod done to it. And then the other one, he wants a V3 IPS kit done to it. Now I thought we could sort of break this video up into a few different parts. We'll do the IPS mod, which is very simple, very minimal effort required. And then we can repair the screen to one of them, which I think has horizontal lines. Then fit a backlight, which is my biggest fear. I am so bad at installing backlights on Game Boys. Uh, I don't know why. I just struggle so much at peeling off that protective film at the back. So it's going to be an interesting video and I'm excited to see what we can achieve. So here we go. Here is the Game Boys. Now it looks like there's a lot of stuff going on in here. Oh, yes, okay. So it's not just Game Boys. This looks like an Eiffel Tower because I believe Ticey Tube is French. Oh, that is so cool. Look at that. That's actually like a really, really detailed one. Look at how beautiful that Eiffel Tower is. Okay, what else have we got in here? We have, is that a little magnet? Is that a little? Yes. Look at this little magnet. This is a magnet of the Eiffel Tower again. <laughs> Very cool. And then some candy. Always good. I'm going to say that these are chocolate eclairs and toffees. And then we have a couple of Game Boys. So this one is the Game Boy Classic restoration. And then this one is the, I think this one's not in very good condition at all. So I think what I'm going to do is actually restore this Game Boy myself. So I'm thinking maybe we could retro bright it and obviously install um, a backlight to it. So it's very yellow. I'm not sure you can, you can tell there on this camera with all the bright lights going on. But let's take a look at this one because I think this one is the one that he's actually done the restoration to. Now this will actually be in a video on his channel. Um, this is basically just me sort of finishing off his uh, process by installing this screen. So here is the Game Boy that he's done the restoration to. And yeah, I mean, that looks absolutely mint condition. You can hopefully see the contrast there and the colors. Look at the color difference. So what we're gonna do to make this very simple, let's break this video up into three parts. V3 IPS kit installation, backlight and biver and screen repair and retro brighting the shell. So without any further ado and chit chat, let's crack on. Checking the Game Boys to see what the problem is shows that the yellow Game Boy has vertical lines missing on the screen. The other one is perfect. Let's go ahead and take the yellowed one apart. Remove the 78 Phillips screws from the front PCB and reconnect both motherboards. This will allow us to turn the Game Boy on and see the damage, whilst having access to the ribbon cable. Lift off this rubber cover and grab your soldering iron. Gently rubbing the soldering iron against the ribbon cable will cause the connection to be re-established and fix the missing lines.
After the screen has been repaired, it's time to get to work on the backlight. Lift the screen out and grab your Dremel. Gently separate the reflective film and polarizing filter off the back of the glass. I do this by lifting one corner and using isopropyl alcohol to dissolve the glue. Unfortunately, this causes unwanted residue on the screen, but it is the safest way to tackle this mod. Grab the backlight and solder the two included wires to the respective pads. This kit is available on Retro Modding. Solder the positive wire to the left pin of this capacitor and the negative wire to the right. Reconnecting the PCBs will show the newly installed backlight in action. Notice how the screen is inverted. This is caused by me rotating the polarizing filter which gives the screen a far better contrast. We now need to install what's called a bivert chip to invert the screen once more to flip the pixels and show the correct image on the screen. Despite me getting it wrong the first time round, installing this chip is fairly simple. Lift up the 6th and 7th pin of the ribbon cable connector and slide the chip underneath. Then using some flux and solder, bridge the pads to the solder points below. After that, the screen should look normal and have vastly increased contrast. To begin the restoration process, we shall take the other half of this Game Boy apart and clean it. It's important to note that retrobrighting is just the posh term for bleaching. You aren't chemically reversing a discoloration, you are simply bleaching the plastic. Retrobrighting is a very hit and miss art, and the results are incredibly unpredictable. Also, we aren't sure of the long term effects that this process could have on plastic. Once the Game Boy is spotlessly clean, I will take some cling film and cover it in a thin coat of hair salon cream. This contains hydrogen peroxide, which is the bleach that does all the work. This is then placed inside of a UV nail hardening lamp for a few hours, constantly checking it and removing air bubbles. The cream is replaced halfway through. This is then repeated for the back of the Game Boy. This process is very simple. Everything is pretty much done for you besides soldering a speaker and plugging it all in. We need to remove some plastic to cater for the new screen. Then assemble everything into this 3D printed guide. All of these parts have been supplied by Retro Modding and will be linked below. We can reinstall the buttons and give the rubber membranes a clean with some IPA to improve reliability. Solder in the old speaker, screw the front back in and pop the back on and we're done. Ta-da! They're done. I'm really pleased with the overall results. As I said earlier on, retrobrighting is a very hit and miss thing. I left it in there for too long. Uh, I went into town and forgot about it, and it was in there for about three hours too long, uh, and that has caused a few problems. There's a little bit of streaking that you might be able to see down in the bottom corner, and also around about where this speaker is, but realistically, it's far bloody better than it was before. 
Also, uh, he didn't want me to stick down the lens because apparently he's got a new one. So I was gonna polish this one up and then stick it down, but um, obviously I'll just leave it unstuck for him to replace himself. It's a no-brainer which one's easier out of the two. And I think it's really, really gonna depend on what you know you guys want from a Game Boy mod. The IPS screen is easy to install. It only requires two wires to be soldered, which is the speaker wires. Um, if you haven't got a soldering iron, you know you can just ask your friend, can you just solder those wires in? And the rest of it's just plug and play and you have to cut the two screw posts and the little bit by the power switch and that's it. That doesn't necessarily mean that this is the best mod out of the two. You have to remember in this IPS mod, you're installing an entire new front PCB, which for some people, they're not necessarily gonna want that. With the backlight, the regular backlight and biver, you still have a lot more of an authentic experience. You definitely feel like it's more of just a modification as opposed to a sort of entire replacement. Um, in an aftermarket shell with this IPS mod and new buttons, the only thing left is just the guts of what actually makes the thing work. The rest of it is so far from the original. And I don't know, that's just a concept that some people are gonna not care about and other people will, but the results, I mean, massively improved. Uh, image like look at the the state of this screen. It's just gorgeous Obviously one thing that this IPS screen can do which the backlight can not do is circuit through different colors Obviously you could install an RGB backlight on here and install a touch sensor But that's gonna add more to the cost the overall cost whereas this IPS screen just does it itself You've also got a really nice brightness control as well Whereas on the backlight you don't but this is a 60 quid kit and this is about 10 quid, 10 pounds, $10, $60, it's all about the same, uh, where depending on where you get it from. So this is definitely in a different league, but the price sort of reflects that anyway. But I mean, I've used this IPS in multiple videos and on multiple different mods, and uh, I'm sure you know by now that the, the screen is absolutely stunning. You know, it's uh, there's no flaws to it. Uh, everything's gorgeous. You don't have any uh, ghosting, which you will still do on the backlight one, albeit it will be, it will appear sort of less prominent and it'll be a little bit reduced, not really. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful mod. It really, really is a very, very beautiful mod. But let's take a look at the backlight and biver. It's a very bloody difficult mod. I cannot sit here and tell you that everyone is gonna be able to go out and peel off a reflective film from behind a screen because it's not an easy process. But I do think the results are very, very good. Now the contrast on this is vastly improved over what it was at the start, but when you stack it up next to the IPS, it's really not gonna look very impressive at all. It's gonna look very washed out, but the difference is still night and day, literally. And also you can see there that the ghosting is still prominent. You know, you're not replacing the screen technology. It's just the backlight behind it. It's personal preference, okay? You don't need a professional to uh, sit here and tell you which one is better out of the two because one of them is in a very different price category to the other. One of them is in a very different difficulty category to the other. And for the lower price, but the higher difficulty and the higher price and the lower difficulty, it's a gamble that you're gonna have to pay up and weigh up and then ultimately pay. Uh, and obviously as well, the whole concept of not playing the original thing, that's gonna be a personal preference thing. But big thank you again to TicyTube for sending this to me. Definitely go and check out his video, that will be linked below. Vapor95 reached out to me and sent me some clothes free of charge, it's not sponsored. I'll be wearing some of those in some of my future videos because I like wearing clothes and I don't like spending money on clothes. So of course I'll take some free clothes. So if you like anything that you see, I'll leave a link to their stuff in the description as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.